Hi, everyone. Today, I'm going to be focusing on my favorite virtual collaborative whiteboard tool, LucidSpark. I've been using LucidSpark since it launched in 2020, but even before that, I had used Lucid's products for years. Lucid Software is an industry leader in visual collaboration for very good reason. In this video, I'm going to focus specifically on why LucidSpark is one of my favorite tools. I'll showcase some of my favorite LucidSpark features and demo how I use them. I'll showcase some of LucidSpark's integrations, and I'll also give you a preview of some of the education-focused tools and templates that the LucidSpark team has created. Within this video, I also have a little bit of a challenge that you can choose to engage with if you wish. And I will be doing a couple of giveaways with that just to add to some fun. Now, I've used a lot of different collaborative virtual whiteboards over the years. I am a visual thinker and being constrained to a more linear way of thinking like you get when you're typing in a Google Doc or a Word document is just not ideal for me. Additionally, in teaching my online calculus classes over the years, my students and I needed a virtual whiteboard in order to work out problems. How I wish that Lucid Spark would have been available when I began teaching my online math courses, but now it is, so I want to share with you. One thing that can be challenging about online whiteboard tools is that they are so freeform and infinite. What's freeing can also be overwhelming. Where do I start? How do I move through this board? What is everyone else looking at right now? But LucidSpark really solves these issues, and I want to explain how. Before I get into that though, I want to explain why I chose LucidSpark. There were three things that initially caught my interest. One, it's simple but robust features like facilitator tools and controls to reduce chaos, keep everyone on track, and help identify individuals who may need some extra support. Two, reactions, voting, and sorting. And three, what I've grown to love and appreciate so much, which are frames. As I was saying, whiteboards can feel like a lot because they are this infinite canvas, but frames help you organize and chunk the information that participants can then navigate using an automated table of contents, or they can scroll through like you would slides. A more recent feature that LucidSpark released that makes my tech with heart sing is visual activities, which allow you to do things like quick temperature checks, team building, and so much more, which I'll showcase later in this video. Let's start though, by looking at LucidSpark's fantastic facilitator tools. At the most basic level, you have your laser pointer to call attention to areas of the screen. You can take the lead, which means that everyone's view will zoom in on precisely what you want them to be focusing on. You can choose to follow any collaborator if you want to, say, guide a student or participant through an activity or just watch how they are navigating the board. There are also facilitator controls that you can toggle on and off. If you toggle any of these features off, participants will not have access to those features. This can definitely be helpful in the classroom setting where you might not want students to be able to hide objects, lock and unlock objects, or begin voting sessions, for example. Speaking of guiding viewers, one of my absolute favorite LucidSpark features is frames, table of contents, and guided paths, like I was saying before. Let me take you to a sample board so I can show you what I mean by this. Let's take a look at this LucidSpark board, which is actually the one that you're gonna have a chance to interact with. I'll explain more about that later, but I wanna center on what I mean by frames. So you'll see that I organized this board into kind of sections with these frames. So I have six of these frames within my larger LucidSpark board. How you know these are frames is I have a little title up here to be able to name each of those frames. Why are those names so important? Because actually you get an automated table of contents right here that are based on any of the frames that you create. That's a really handy way to then navigate because I just can use the table of contents and it will zoom me in to each of those frames. Let's go down here and let's zoom to content again. How do I create a frame? Say that right here. Let's just add in a little something. And if I want this to show up in my table of contents, all I do is highlight one or more objects. It could have multiple. Here, I'm just gonna use one. Go over here, click on 
frame and then it creates a frame around it. I can rename my frame. I can change the color and even the thickness of the border around that frame. And then it automatically shows up in my table of contents at the bottom. I can just click on it and drag in order to reorder it. So if I want hello to come first and then navigation tips, and so forth. In addition, you can create what are called paths. I love creating paths because it works more like a presentation. So you'll see that I already have one path created, but let's create a new one. And now you just drag and drop the frames, the order of them that you want. So let's go ahead and let's start with hello. So you just click it to add it up here. The second one that I wanted was my navigation tips. And then I'll just add in all of the rest. And now this is in the order that I want. Press done. What you can do now is you can click on this link and then give it to your participants. So when they go to that link, they can just follow the path. When they follow the path, they're going to have all the navigation options down here. So it's kind of like they're moving through slides and it will orient them through. They can view all and it will bring up that table of contents type thing. They can also exit the path if they'd like to just move around the board as they like, but this can be a really helpful way to navigate your viewers exactly as you want them to, to make what can feel overwhelming in a whiteboard when you just have a whole bunch of stuff feel more organized. Another standout feature is Lucid's breakout boards. This allows you to split the class into their own separate workspaces. This works a lot like the breakout rooms feature that you're probably familiar with in Google Meet and Zoom. Once everyone is split into their own spaces, you can choose to join and bounce between the various groups. When it's time to bring everyone back together, you can call people back within Lucid Spark too. What's pretty cool is that you can actually take the content that was worked on in the breakout and drag it directly onto the main page to discuss as a large group. As we begin discussing the ideas altogether, we can use power features that allow you to sort, gather, and group ideas. Then have participants engage by having them add reactions to the various points. You can also start a voting session to see how people are feeling about what they are seeing on the board and to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to weigh in. Now, let's take a look at those visual activities that I was saying is my favorite recent addition. This provides interactive and collaborative activities for students and teams. You can choose from a variety of pre-created visual activities and either run them as is, or you can edit and customize them. For example, let's go over here to visual activities, more categories, look at the one-on-ones. So if you wanna just do a quick mood board, let's go ahead and add that board to the presentation. How are you feeling today? And then individuals will have a chance to drag whatever's a draggable. You can actually click that object on and off to make it draggable or not draggable, but these are set up that you can just go ahead and use right away, or you can edit them however you want. You can even edit this, any of the text, you can edit. You can see that these are not draggable, they're static, and anything that you want to be draggable will be green highlighted. That only works within these visual activities, but you have a whole lot of different types. So not just sliders, though I do love these sliders for a quick check-in, but this quad activity board, for example, let's add that. This is also great. You can place any objects you want here to make draggable. Anything you put inside of this box will automatically become draggable. Look at how this works. If I drag it into this box, it knows it should be a draggable object. If I move it over here, it knows it should not be a draggable object. Of course, I can change any of these things by clicking between static and a movable object. But basically, if you create your board like this, you could put a bunch of sticky notes here that you want people to order and arrange say like that, and then you could change instead of your categories, first choice, second choice, and so forth to have people be able to organize and sort their thoughts and everybody will be able to participate. You'll just save the changes. And then when you press start, you'll see how it works, that these are the only objects that are draggable. I can move them into any of the buckets like this. And then when I'm done, I press submit. At this point, you can view results. You can look at an overview of everybody. You can also look by object. You can see where people agree. Of course, I only have one person in here, so it's not gonna look that exciting, but that is how they work. 
everybody will have a chance to participate with the activity. Let's look at one more classroom example for elementary school. In this one, I've made a color sort activity and I've actually used the quad template, which has a cool data view that I wanna show you. So let's put all the yellow stuff, the blue stuff, the purple, and finally the pink. Submit. Now let's go ahead and view the results for this activity. We will see an overview and also a breakdown by objects, which is a very cool way to analyze things. Let me start with the overview though. So the overview you'll see when you hover over like the yellow, everybody had consensus. Five people in here, five people thought both of these were yellow. However, in the blue, you can see we had five participants, but only four people thought the square was blue. And when you hover over it, you can see the letters of who thought they were blue. And you can see that remaining fifth one down in that purple indicator because the person whose initial started with the B thought that the blue square went in the purple category. So you can see that. And then if I hover over the circle blue, you can see three people got this correct, but two people, initials B and C, thought that object was actually purple. So that's a really cool view that you can get that's a breakdown by objects. As well, if you click on any individual, you'll see their answers, just their answers. So I could see how each of these people did. Now you can do this where you have people sign in with their actual names. You can also do this in an anonymous mode, depending on what you're looking to do. You'll see that I have left a little Lucid Spark board that you're gonna have a chance to interact with that is similar. It's a uh, what emoji best describes you, where you're gonna be able to drag into multiple buckets. Before I exit out of this activity that I'm gonna have you engage with, I wanna show you one more thing. Now I've set this up with sticky notes already there, everything's going to be anonymous. However, something that's really nice for in the classroom is that when students add sticky notes, their name is automatically going to show up as the author. And that can be a really nice way to see who's contributing what at a glance. You have control over whether or not you wanna see that. If you go into the facilitator tools, you can toggle on and off show authors. Only facilitators have access to these controls, remember, so you don't have to worry that students are going to be toggling that on and off. The last thing that I want to showcase is templates. I've said it so many times already, but I know that starting a blank infinite canvas can feel like a lot. Lucid has so many pre-created templates, many of which have been designed specifically for educators and by educators. You can filter by topic or search for a keyword. Once you preview and select the template you like, you can customize and edit to fit your precise needs. And once you've started your Lucid Spark board, you can still search out more templates to pull directly into what you're already working on to combine multiple ideas. Now that I've demoed some of the features, I wanna talk about four more points and then I'm gonna share an activity that you can engage with. So stick around until the end for a collaborative challenge. As an educator, I'm always looking for ways to further my professional growth and be inspired by others. Lucid offers so much good training, like templates specifically for education, an ambassador group to collaborate with other educators, get inspired, engage with monthly challenges, and share ideas, the opportunity to earn LinkedIn badges by engaging with their excellently developed mini courses, which are applicable not only in the education world, but also in the business world and other things too. The second thing is Lucid's integrations. They've partnered with a variety of different tools to make your workflow optimize and pull everything in one space seamlessly. I know that Google integration is an important one for many educators. Not only does Lucid software integrate brilliantly with all things Google Drive, Docs, Calendar, etc., Lucid Spark is one of the three tools that Google is recommending that Jamboard users move to. Lucid Spark is building an import tool that will allow you to copy your Jamboards directly into Lucid Spark. I'll share more about that when it's ready, but it's an important thing to know that since Jamboard is winding down soon, this is coming. Finally, Lucid Software is a top-rated application among businesses. As educators, we are always looking to equip our learners with skills that they will use far beyond the classroom. Lucid Spark and Lucid Chart are both top tools used in both higher ed and in the business world for visual collaboration. So I think this is another reason to choose Lucid Software and help students become power users early on. 
Now, I said I was going to close with an activity for you. I will actually be picking a handful of people to send some lucid swag to who choose to engage and post on social media. You'll find more details in the description box of my YouTube video where I've left a link to the Lucid Spark board that we can all collaborate on. Your challenge is to engage with the board and add in your thoughts. Then, if you want to enter the contest, share out a highlight that you learned or just a screenshot of something that you posted with a little bit of context. Let me take you over to the Lucid Spark board to explain things better and to orient you to the activity. I've already referenced this Lucid Spark board that you're going to have a chance to interact with. Again, the link is in the YouTube description box if you want to interact with it. Here's how it works. First, you'll be taken through the path. You can use that or use the table of contents to navigate. Option three is you can scroll and pan the whiteboard. And I have some tips for scrolling and panning within the whiteboard. I think it's easiest to just follow the path though. So you'll do the emoji check-in first. So you would just press start and then you can drag the emojis to answer each of these questions. You can only use each emoji once. So just know that, but go ahead and drag them into the various boxes just like that. And when you're done, press submit and you'll be able to view what other people are saying Two, for fun, let's go to the next activity, which is can you see yourself using Lucid Spark? So you'll see here that I just used that check-in activity, but just edited the text to make it a question that I wanted to ask you. So when you're done with that, press submit. It will tell you activity complete. You can change your response if you want. You can also view the results of everybody else and kind of see how that's going to work. It'll give you an average for that one. Next one up is grab a sticky note in your choice of color. So I've put a lot of sticky notes here and just add a thought to each of these columns. So this is the rose thorn bud activity. Just think about it in terms of what you learned from this video. Uh, what was a highlight for you? What is something that you think is going to be a challenge maybe in using Lucid Spark and a bud? What new idea did this spark? So go ahead and add some thoughts. If there aren't enough sticky notes, you can go ahead and add your own sticky notes by going over here and just clicking on any color that you want. I did red, green, and blue, so you could keep with those colors or experiment. This is just to have fun. So go ahead, add in your thoughts. Next is a gratitude jar activity. I got this based on one of the templates that I saw. Go ahead and type your answer on one of these sticky notes and then move it over. Make sure you're on the selection tool and then you'll be able to click on one of these sticky notes. Go ahead and type in your thoughts. So I'm grateful for you taking the time to watch and then you can drag it in to one of the jars so that it's complete and your sticky notes not in the side. This could be great for the classroom. I love doing these types of activities in my classroom, no matter what grade level of students I am working with. And then lastly, this is just a spotlight board where maybe you can share a spark. What are you planning to implement right now? What are you still wondering? What are some roadblocks that you might still have? And if there's anything else that you wanna add, if you have any ideas that you you've done, go ahead and add them here. I added some sticky notes again. You can put in more sticky notes if there aren't enough there. And that's the activity. So you can log in. I've made it so that anybody can log in. Even if you haven't used Lucid Spark before, you can log in just as a guest. Your name doesn't even need to be attached to this. And hopefully this will just be a fun activity for you, spark some ideas, and allow you to see what some other educators are thinking at the same time. All right, that is going to be it. I know I shared a lot of information in this video. I hope you enjoyed seeing what Lucid Spark offers and why I love this tool. Additionally, I hope that you were able to engage with the collaborative board that I shared and got some ideas from that. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment or message me directly. And with that, I'll say bye for now.